1971, a really tremendous year for sport. A year of disappointments for some and triumphs for others. Here, a royal triumph. Princess Anne, who did well at the badminton horse trials and in the European three-day equestrian event. She did so well, in fact, that Her Royal Highness became Sportswoman of the Year. Sportsman of the Year, World Lightweight Champion Ken Buchanan, danced with Princess Anne. Aintree in the Grand National. Many of the punters were convinced they'd found a sure thing for the race. With 38 runners, 4 miles, 856 yards, and 30 grueling jumps, it all added up to probably the toughest race in the world. The question was, which one would finish? The winner was number seven, specified, written by Johnny Cook, and second placing to Black Secret. Still on the equestrian scene, this time another classic, the Derby. Mill Reef drew away in the final furlong from Linden Tree. Jockey Jeff Lewis made it a brilliant win. Linden Tree held out for second place. Over in Era, the winner of the world famous Irish Derby was appropriately Irish Ball. A great year for Rugger. To mark Rugby Union's centenary, the Union's president, Sir William Ramsey, unveiled a plaque. Rugby League had its highlights too. The Rugby League Cup final at Wembley between Leeds and Lee. This was the winning try by Lee. The final score, Lee 24, Lee 7. In Sydney, the South African Springbok Rugby Tour ran into trouble when anti-apartheid demonstrators clashed with the authorities. The final score, 65 demonstrators arrested, six policemen injured, and a win to the Springboks, 21 to 12. Spearhead of the British Lions in New Zealand, Barry John. Oxford and Cambridge in their annual trial of strength, the 117th University Boat Race. Cambridge took the lead and finished with a 10-length margin to make it four victories in a row. From the quiet waters of the Thames to the raging Passirio River in Italy, venue of the exciting World Canoe Championships. In all, there were eight titles to be won, but highest honours went to the German team, who got through without an error. Championships of another kind. This time it was water skiing at Bedfont. Paul Seaton in the slalom final, just short of the British record. Paul Seaton again, this time in the men's event with an incredible 148 feet. Prime Minister Edward Heath was among those who took part in the Isle of Wight's regatta, Cows Week, on his American-designed yacht, Morning Cloud. Also at Cows, a more noisier form of slicing through the water, the 245-mile powerboat race to Torquay and back. Italy's Ronnie Benelli won the race in Lady Nara. Riders from seven countries fought it out at the Wills International Trophy Championship. New Zealander Ronnie Moore crashed, but three times world champion Ivan Morga was again the winner. Opening day of the first test between England and Pakistan. Zahir, for the visitors, at close of play, scored 159. Final day's score, Pakistan 270. The Indians, later in the season, were also here. The Queen spoke to the players on the opening day of the first test at Lord's Cricket Ground. The 100th British Open Golf Championship. Liang Huan Lu from Formosa on the 18th. And there's the winner, Mexican Lee Trevino, who completed his hat-trick, winning the US Open, the Canadian Open and the British Open. At Wimbledon, Princess Alexandra presented the Women's Singles Trophy to Australia's Yvonne Goulagon. 
and another victory for Australia when John Newcomb won the men's singles. The British Grand Prix, where 25 world-class drivers battled it out at Silverstone for £40,000. The flying Scotsman, Jackie Stewart, took the lead and held it until he crossed the line the winner. The season was marred with the death of Joe Siffert during the Brands Hatch World Champion victory race, a tragic loss to the motor racing world. The Monte Carlo Rally, where only 22 out of the 248 starters finished the course. In conditions like these, it wasn't surprising. After 98 hours of this sort of driving, the winners, Ovi Anderson and David Stone. A different kind of rally this time, the RAC Rally took drivers through England, Scotland and into the Welsh forests. Winners were Sweden's Stig Blomqvist and Arne Hertz. Of course, you could always try your hand or feet at this. A hundred pedal-powered monsters built by scouts themselves roared down Brighton's parade in the national scout car races. The Tour of Britain milk race was held, the toughest amateur cycle race in the world. The thousand-mile winner, Fedor den Hertog from Holland. And speaking of wheels, how about this? They all managed to pedal 40 miles non-stop, which must prove something. Taking final shape, the new Olympic Stadium at Munich, ready to seat 66,000 people. British Olympic hope David Bedford, seen here at London's Crystal Palace, has a crack at the 5,000 metres final. On the sixth lap, Bedford developed cramp. Martin Chivers of Spurs put the ball past Villa goalie Dunn in the League Cup final at Wembley. Chivers scored his second goal, which made Tottenham Hotspurs the League Cup winners. Over the border, enthusiasm was no less great when the Scottish Cup final took place between Celtic and Rangers. And that was the winning goal from Celtic, a well-deserved victory for a great team. At Wembley, the FA Cup final was clinched when, after extra time, Arsenal's Charlie George scored the winning goal. It was a stunning 2-1 victory, and the double was theirs. Frank McClintock with the most sought-after cup in soccer. Who'll take it this year? The European Cup final between Holland and Greece won 2-0 by the Dutch team Ajax. It was one of the wildest celebrations ever seen at Wembley. The triumphant Ajax team had difficulty in breaking away to collect their trophy. And so to this scene of happy celebrations, a fitting climax to a really great year of sport.